Now we're ready to focus on calculating IV push medication administration. For IV push calculation, we have a new formula. It is total number of seconds to push the medication over divided by the total number of increments. So write that formula down. This is the only time with IV push calculations that your volume does not go on the top. In this case, it is your time, total number of seconds to be pushed over that goes on the top as your numerator. Total number of increments is your denominator. Now we're going to discuss how to reach each one of these numbers. For, but first, we need to go to our drug books and look up some information before we can calculate it. The next thing that you will do before you can actually work your problem is once you've figured your total volume that you're going to have with diluent and medicine, if you're going to have 3 cc's, you can use a 3 cc syringe. If you're going to need more than that, you need to get a 5 or a 10 cc syringe. The reason this is important is you have to know which syringe you're going to use and how many increments per milliliter your syringe has. The next thing that you need before you can actually work your problem or do your calculations is you need to determine what size syringe you need and get your syringe and look at it. Why is this important? Because different size syringes will have different numbers of increments. By increments, we mean the small black lines, the number of them that are contained within one milliliter. Typically, not always, but typically, a three milliliter syringe has 10 increments, small black marks, per one milliliter. Typically, a five and 10 milliliter syringe has five increments, per one milliliter. Again, it's important that you get your syringe. We have a 3cc syringe here. And you look at your syringe and actually count your increments per milliliter. I'm going to place this back at the beginning. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten increments in one milliliter. Ten increments per one milliliter. Now that we know what information we need to collect and how to collect it, let's go back to our formula. We will need the total number of seconds that the medicines to be administered over, that's our numerator. The total number of increments is our denominator. Remember that there are 60 seconds for every one minute. And remember that our increments are the number of small lines per one milliliter on your syringe. Now let's work a problem, a problem of IV push medication using our formula of total seconds over total increments. But before we can work our problem, we have to find out a lot of information. We have an order for Dilaudid 2 milligrams IV push now. We see how our medication, what it is available in. Dilaudid 2 milligrams per one milliliter. So we will need one milliliter of Dilaudid. We look in our drug book and see if Dilaudid needs to be diluted, and if so, with how much. Our drug book recommends that we dilute with one milliliter of normal saline per every one milligram of Dilaudid. Since we're administering two milligrams of Dilaudid, we will need to dilute our Dilaudid with two milliliters of normal saline. Also, when we're looking in the drug book, we look for 
the rate of administration to deliver the dilaudid over. The drug book recommends that we give every two milligrams of dilaudid over five minutes. Since we are giving two milligrams of dilaudid, we will administer our medication over five minutes. Next, let's calculate our total volume. We had two milligrams of dilaudid per one ml. So we have one milliliter of medication. We're going to dilute that medication with two milliliters of normal saline or diluent. So our total volume in this problem is three milliliters. Next, we need to get a syringe and look at our syringe. We know that a three ml syringe will work and we get our 3 ml syringe and we look at it and it has 10 increments per milliliter. That is 10 small black lines, each one of them in this case worth 0 0.1 milliliters. So we have a total volume of 3 milliliters. To calculate our total increments we say 3 milliliters times 10 increments. So our total number of increments for this problem is 30. Next, we need our total number of seconds. And to calculate this, we say our total number of minutes is 5. 5 minutes times 60 seconds equals 300 seconds. Now that we've gathered all of our information, we're ready to work our problem. Again, for IV push, total number of seconds is our numerator over total number of increments, our denominator. We calculated that we would give our dilaudid over 5 minutes. 5 times 60 is 300 seconds, and that is our numerator, divided by our total number of increments, which was 30. 300 divided by 30 equals 10. So we would give one increment every 10 seconds. To get it correct on the test, you must write one increment every 10, and you must have seconds there so that we know you're talking about seconds. Now we're going to discuss accurate and correct documentation of IV push medications. We want to document how many milliliters you administer within a very specific time frame or with each push. If you have 10 increments per 1 milliliter, you will be administering 0.1 ml with each push. If you have 5 increments per 1 ml, you will be delivering 0.2 mLs per increment or with each push. For the problem that we just worked with our dilaudid, we were administering one increment every 10 seconds. An example of documentation would be we administered 2 milligrams of dilaudid diluted with 2 milliliters of normal saline given IV push over a total of 5 minutes. 0 0.1 milliliters was given every 10 seconds. That way there's no doubt about how much you delivered and in what time frame. This is a better way to actually document in your record than saying one increment. You're validating the size syringe you had and what your increments were worth. Was it 0 0.1 or 0 0.2?